So deep learning and RGIS, it's two different aspects. One is the experience within Pro. The other is the Python API. As a data scientist, what you can do with it. So we started off with trying to demystify deep learning and bringing in RGS users who can benefit from that, but who do, don't need to understand all of the mechanics behind that. Those are the ones who experience a better, uh, more accurate answer, and so on. And then you have the image analyst as an RGS professional trying to get their workflows into place that happen to use these tools that are powered by spatial deep learning. And then, of course, you have the data scientist whose work goes into you know, in trying to create the models to train them and to be able to put them into production. All of that is added into Pro and also into the RGS API for Python, which has a learn module intended just for this. You can bring in your training data, do the data engineering. You can also create those models, validate them, and then put it back into production. I think the best way for you to understand is through a couple of demos. So I'd like to turn it back to Vinay and Rohit to walk us through a few demos to show us the power of deep learning within ArcGIS. Yep. Vinay? Thanks. Thanks, Jay. So one of the exciting new capabilities of the platform is the end-to-end -end support for deep learning within the platform. So today I'm going to show you how you can use deep learning in an organization such as the BLM to identify the monitor of uh, to monitor the progress of drilling and look for potential illegal drilling. Let's look at the BLM lands in southeastern New Mexico and the rapid growth of oil and gas development in this area. The green dots here, they represent well pads. And there's a whole bunch of well pads in this region. I'm going to use Sentinel-2 imagery for my analysis. And at 10 meter resolution, you can see a collection of well pads in this landscape. Sentinel-2 imagery is great for change detection, primarily because the refresh rate of the imagery is once every five days. When I compare the two images, clearly you can see at least three new well pads in here. And when I overlay the well points that are provided by the state, you'll see an interesting problem. There are at least two new well pads in here that do not have permits issued. There are unregistered well points. So how do I process this entire area of interest? Identify all of the well pads in here that are not registered. The answer is deep learning. There are three aspects to deep learning. One is extracting your training samples. Two is training your models. And three, eventually detecting objects across this landscape. So I'll hand it over to Rohit, who's going to show you the complete workflow in the context of ArcGIS notebooks. Over sure, Vinay. So the first thing that deep learning needs is a lot of training samples to look at and learn from. That needs the locations of objects that you're looking for and the imagery. Not a problem. We already have the layer of the known well pad locations. We'll bring that in. And for the imagery, I'll use Sentinel. Now I can create my training samples. You might have seen the export training data tool in ArcGIS Pro. Well, now that same tool is available in image server and through the Python API. And in the interest of time, I've already exported my training samples in this folder. The Python API also includes tools for data preparation. I can just point it at that location where those samples have been created. And it does data augmentation, that is randomly zooming, flipping, and rotating these images so we can train a more accurate model. And this is what those samples look like after performing those augmentations. Now we are ready to train our model. And we've added support for that, too, in the ArcGIS Learn module of the Python API. I'll be training a single shot detector, so called because of its ability to find all objects in an image in one glance. We've also include included handy tools like FastAI's Learning Rate Finder that helps you identify the optimum learning rate to, to fine-tune your model. And that removes a lot of guesswork that's typically associated with deep learning. Here I'm fitting the model to my data. And as you can notice, with each epoch, 
or training pass over the sample data, my loss or the error rate is going down. That means the model is starting to learn to find these well paths. Let's see what it's learned so far. In the left, we've got the ground truth. On the right, we've got the predictions. And you can see how well the model is figuring out where these well paths are in each image chip. It even found these well paths which were not labeled in my training data. Now, once you're satisfied with training your, your model, you want to save it out. And when you do that, it creates an EMD, an S3 model definition that can be used in Pro for inferencing, or a deep learning package that can be used with raster analytics for performing distributed inferencing. Here I've added that deep learning package as an item to my enterprise. And I'm calling the detect objects tool that's now available with image server to perform distributed inferencing across a large geographic area at scale and using GPUs. I've done it for all of southeastern New Mexico. And here's the layer that I can now share with Vinay to take the analysis further. Thank you. And it's over to you, Vinay. Thank you. Now keep in mind the tools that he just showed, it's available in ArcGIS Pro as well. So directly through the RAS Analysis tab, you have access to both the Detect Objects tool and the Classify Pixels tool. Once you run the tool, you can leverage the resources of your desktop, or you could leverage your server resources. Specify your inputs, your output location, and a model definition essentially is the same trained model which he's shared through his WebGIS. Now, these are the results Rohit has shared with me. It's accessible directly in my GIS. I drag it into Pro for both visualization and analysis purposes. Overlaying the data that is provided by the state, I can now extract the well pads and identify all of the well pads that are unregistered. Everything in blue are well pads that are unregistered. With this new information, we can now align our inspection plans with our field staff to optimize efficiency. To summarize, ArcGIS has powerful deep learning capabilities. From ArcGIS Pro, in addition to ArcGIS Pro and the Map Viewer, the Python API seamlessly integrates with these deep learning capabilities. So what we showed you was an end-to-end -end workflow, an end-to-end -end deep learning workflow within ArcGIS. I'll hand it back to Rohit now, who's going to be showing you an integration workflow with external frameworks. Thanks. OK, so now let's look at the exciting world of pavement cracks. I'm sure all of you have seen cracks like these, but did you know that they're caused due to several different factors and need different types of repair? Alligator cracks, for instance, my favorite, are caused by uneven load and poor construction. Now, several organizations have a need to find where these cracks are so they can be prioritized for repair. And it has traditionally been a manual process involving paper forms like these and has evolved to using sophisticated sensors that are highly accurate but can be out of the reach of, of many organizations. So can we use deep learning and solve this problem? Sure, we can. Let me show you how we used uh, uh, deep learning to detect these pavement cracks on dash cam videos. And I'll do that in this notebook, where we've integrated ArcGIS with TensorFlow. The model that we are using has been trained on these dash cam images that have been labeled with the different types of cracks that we just saw. Here's the code that's connecting to my GIS, loading the trained TensorFlow model, and accessing the layer that we'll be updating with the results. And here it's going through each frame of that video, detecting those cracks, and updating a feature layer with that information. So let's look at the results. So as the car is, is moving, we are detecting the, the cracks on the road, 
And we are putting all of this information in a system of record. We are also updating a, a, an attachment with the feature layer showing exactly what the model discovered. And a great way to share the results of your analysis with your stakeholders is through a dashboard. I love Operations Dashboard because it lets me create these beautiful maps and charts that are all data driven. So in this map on the left, we are seeing a simple view of what the model discovered. And if I, can, if I click on a feature, I can see what exactly it saw at that location, how many cracks there are, what they look like. And these handy charts on the right, they help me gain insights, such as the number of longitudinal cracks is increasing towards that segment of the road, while the number of alligator cracks is more towards the beginning. That's how you can take data science and deep learning and solve real-world problems. Thank you.